Welcome to Bizarre Yet Bonafide, the podcast of the paranormal. So what's the deal? We recording? Um, yes. I think so, yes. Got it. We are live, baby. We are not live. Welcome to the inaugural episode of Bizarre Yet Bonafide, the podcast of the paranormal, during which we take you down an untrodden path to the land of mind fuckery, leaving you wide-eyed and wondering, yet hopefully answering some questions along the way. I'm Grace. Anton? Oh, um, I'm Anton. And together, we hope to prove the involvement of supernatural phenomenon in real-world mysteries. What? No, you hope to prove it. I'm just here to keep you on the straight and narrow, guiding you back to reality when you stray too far into the world of make-believe. And after all, isn't that what friends are for? No, friends generally go bowling and stuff, and they don't sit around making podcasts together. We're co-workers. But if it weren't for us, who would investigate the weird happenings of the world? I don't know, the FBI, also like 500 other podcasts. Why should we leave everything to the FBI? Ask not what my country can do for me, Anton. Okay, It may so... have been the 50s, but it is advice that rings true today. So this podcast is an act of patriotism now, is it? Okay, so I originally thought that because this is our first episode, maybe we should ease our listeners in gently, but I found something and it is bizarre. Well, I may live to regret this, but the floor is yours. What do you make of this? Six teens in the woods, one dead body, and no remains. A dead body's pretty big remain. No, I mean, just listen. Six teens head into this big wooded area that's supposed to be haunted, right? One of them wanders off and bam, walks squelch first into a dead body. Okay, you say squelch first and you think I'm just gonna let that go. And get this, they book it out of there, scared out of their skinny jeans, but when they return with the police, the body's gone. The dead woman's been taken. Right, so I assume the cops saw drag marks in the dirt? Nope, nothing. So no body, no sign there ever was a body. Clearly the kids made it up. <laughs> you sound just like the cops, man. Or how I imagined they sounded anyway. Unfortunately, I wasn't there. Unfortunately, you weren't there to be murdered? No, to, you know, have a little chit chat with the cops. I just think I could have given them some perspective. Oh, you're that person on the crime scene, like I a mean, serial if, killer return. How do I know you didn't do this, Grace? I'm just gonna say, Anton, if I see police tape, I might linger in case they need a bouncing board. Okay, where did this happen? Where is there? Upstate New York. Hackett Woods or something. I think there used to be a big quarry there, but now it's just acres and acres of privately owned land. Okay, how about this for a theory? Kids were trespassing on privately owned land, so the owners called the cops. The kids made up some story about a dead body to take the heat off. No way. The boy sounded really convincing. Oh, okay, then it must be true. Also, how do you know he sounded convincing? Well, this is how I found out. The boy from the woods posted a reaction video about seeing the dead body. He's freaked out, wants to know what the sweet hell is going on. He's only 15, Anton, and he's scared. Grace, look at me and tell me you haven't been messaging teenagers on the internet. Of course not. You have to become friends first no, to no, message them and no, I, my no, friend no, request no, no, no. is pending. I need to solve this for him. This is the type of stuff that can mess you up as a kid. Then tell him the truth. If there was a body, it was taken by a bear. End of discussion. What kind of bear kills its prey, dicks off for a whole afternoon, then pops back and guzzles it whole? Could have been two different bears. So you're saying there was a bear accomplice. That's actually pretty interesting. This is the first rational thing you've said so I'm far. I'm calling it the Goldilocks defense. <sighs> okay, fine. If this woman didn't get eaten, what happened? No, like I'm saying maybe she did get eaten, just not by any known creature. Oh, brother. Come on, open your mind. That's the whole point. Look, Grace, I want to open my mind. I really do, but I'm going to need help. My mind is guarded. It needs to be coaxed open with delicious evidence and facts. 
Fine by me. I'll tempt that shy little mind of yours right open and slimed with my paranormal juices. Has this gotten weird? This feels weird. Definitely, but weird is the order of the day. So how about this? I'm going to contact the boy who posted the story and present undisputable evidence that something happened in those woods, and you present your mind to me, open and ready to be stuffed. Ew. But, okay, I'm in. Full pinky swear? Full pinky swear, cross my heart times a billion. If you show me actual proper evidence, I will reconsider my cynicism. If this dead body thing is bizarre yet bona fide, I'll change my mind. Sorry, can I just get one more pinky swear because it was so sweaty that it felt like it just slipped okay, right well, out. Okay, well, it and was sweaty on your end, like... so me redoing it is not gonna do anything. You need to wash your hands. Okay, um, I think it should be clean now. Okay, that was so fast. I don't trust that you properly washed it, but fine. Oh, man, you just signed your life away. You know I'm not going to stop until I prove you wrong, don't you? Well, then we'll be doing this podcast until the day we die. Which might be sooner than we think with all the horrors lurking in the forests, cryptids, trolls, creepy shit like that. You know, I think that's a great hook to leave our listeners dangling on, don't you? Is that your polite way of saying you're done? I can only take a certain amount of your imagination at once, Grace. It's kind of like radiation. Little doses at a time are fine, but anything more in my face might melt off. That's, like, in a weird way, a compliment, I think. Yeah, let's go with that. Okay, folks, thanks for listening. We'll have a lot more about the unexplained phenomenon of the world in episodes to come, but for now, I'm focusing on what happened to that woman in the woods. So we can say for certain, whether it's bizarre yet bona fide, or bizarre, yet... Anton, what's the episode bona fide? Bullshit. Okay, that's a little strong, but you're a bitter, jaded soul, so I'll allow it. Hey! See you next time, folks! <laughs> Welcome to Bizarre Bonafide, the podcast of the paranormal. Welcome to the latest episode of Bizarre Yet Bonafide. If you're here, it means that you, too, wish to delve into the unexplained mysteries that pierce our understanding of the world, and maybe, just maybe, discover the devastating truth behind them. Welcome, welcome one and all to our devastatingly unpopular podcast. You're in a good mood. I just enjoyed your dramatic opening. Don't be gross, Anton. What the hell? That doesn't even make sense. So, last week we explored a report of a dead body in the woods found by some kid who was underage drinking with his buddies. Firstly, false report. And second, you don't know they were underage drinking. That's libel. Oh, come on. How did you spend your nights when you were 15. Playing video games with a glass of warm milk, if you must know. That's the cutest thing I've ever heard. Shut up. And by the way, we don't know it was false. We just know that the body he claimed to see was gone by the time he returned with the police. I remember, yeah. Pretty sus. Pretty sus indeed. Well, guess what? I reached out to that kid. Disclaimer, we do not condone stalking minors online, like at all. He's adamant he saw a body. Listen to the message he sent. I remember the smell. It was kind of sweet, but like in a bad way. I was super freaked out and just ran back to the others. When I showed the cops where I found it, the body was gone. They said I was lucky they didn't book me for time wasting. It got me real worried because my girlfriend's going to summer camp around the same area. And if there's something killing people out there, I don't think she should go. Do I need to remind you of the boy who cried wolf? Notice the way he phrased it something out there. And I'm not talking wolves, I'm talking cryptids. Okay, here we go. Yes, cryptids, creatures of the deep, menaces of the wild, basically animals that don't exist within the realms of what we know to be real. Loch Ness Monster, Bigfoot, werewolves, yeti. Or that don't exist at all. Probably the biggest name out there. You all know him, you all love him. It's America's Sweet Squatch. That's right, it's Bigfoot. Oh, he's an A-lister cryptid, all right. He's pulling in for the crowd. Racking up them followers. Dishing out that content. Soaking up that hashtag ad revenue. He's... 
go with it. Big. What? Oh. That's it. It's in the name. I know, Anton. Not you every just landing said his gets name. stuck. If I were an Olympic athlete, I would lose points for that. I realize that. Okay, Anton, stop getting distracted. How can I keep you safe from this magnificent beast if you don't have all the facts? How about I just stay out of the woods? Time to learn about Bigfoot, or Biggis Footis, as they say in Latin. Absolutely, they do not. Here, read this. Bigfoot is considered by cryptozoologists as a species, not an individual cryptid. It is thought to be a hairy, ape-like humanoid that stands up to 10 feet tall. Most sightings have been in the Pacific Northwest and North America. They communicate through howls, screams, moans, grunts, and whistles. Variations of ape-like creatures have been spotted all over the world, known as skunk ape, wood booger, yeti, and many more. Skunk ape? Skunk ape? That's unnecessary. Imagine just going about your business thinking your name's Gerald or Steve just to find out the world's calling you skunk ape. No wonder he's attacking people. I'd be pissed too. That's assuming he understands English. Like, skunk ape in Sasquatch language might be like... Do that again? Surprisingly close. I was impressed too. Okay, what's his weakness? How do I kill a Bigfoot if it ever comes to blows? Protect me, Grace. You should never kill a Bigfoot. They have feelings and families and hopes and dreams. Also, I'm not sure there are specific ways like a crucifix on a vampire or silver and wolfsbane on a werewolf. I think you're bearing the lead here. If there was a body, which there wasn't, it's way more likely it was the work of some machete mad serial killer or something. Listen, thousands of people have vanished in national parks in recent years. Something big has got to be afoot. If not big foot, Maybe Wendigos or the Nyx? I know I'm going to regret this, but what is the Nyx? The Nyx has got some serious issues, my friend. It's an aquatic humanoid that lures kids to water and drowns them because it's lonely. Most active on Midsummer's Night, Christmas Eve, and Thursdays. Wait, wait, wait. Thursdays? Yeah. Maybe Thursday is the Nyx's Friday. Like, after a long, tough week at work, he just wants to let his hair down. Maybe drown some kids. Three-day weekend, baby. Okay, so the Nyx is not someone you'd want to go for a beer with. Yeah, I'd say, even as a single girl, I wouldn't go for a drink with the Nyx. But Bigfoot, what? I mean, what the hell? Yeah, I mean, of course, yes. I would. You, yeah, with of Bigfoot, course, yeah. Of course you'd date Bigfoot, even though you suspect him to be... I mean, he's uh, like, he's tall, which like really ticks the box for me. That's huge. Also, like, how fun would it be to have like a boyfriend that you could call Woodbooger? Even though you suspect him to be the culprit behind bloody murder, you need to raise your standards, dude. I bet it was a misunderstanding. Maybe a Bigfoot came across a human, attacked them out of fear, then just booked it because he didn't want to do hard time. Big feet are not aware of our judicial system. How could you possibly know that? I also read that they bury their dead, so they might bury anything they kill too. I think I know where this is going. Yep, the missing body in the woods. What if it didn't disappear? What if it was buried by Bigfoot? You've got to think outside the box here. And by the way, there's loads of other evidence of Bigfoot too. Get this, miners, and we're not talking about the one that I DM, right. in the 1900s reported being attacked by ape men. And in the same year, a US citizen was kidnapped by a family of Bigfoot for six days. Plus, a man in Georgia claims to have smelled a Bigfoot. Okay, so Bigfoot smells like shit and you still want to date him. The real issue is whether he'd want to date me, if I'm being honest. I'm not his type. It's a known fact that Big Feet are actually sexually attracted to cows. No way, I'm shutting this down. Bigfoot being sexually attracted to cows is where I draw the line. If only I could look like a cow and get a Bigfoot. Nope. Oh, how about this? Maybe a Bigfoot romanced a cow and that's how the Sheep Squatch was born. The what? The Sheep Squatch. It's another cryptid. White fur, big teeth, curly horns. In what world do you expect me to believe in a sheep squatch? How bad would you feel if you met a sheep squatch one day and it said, you didn't believe in me? All this time I believed in you. So are they killing people in the woods too? Maybe this poor person the kid saw came across a sheep squatch and thought it was just a sheep. But really it was a squatch. A squatch in sheep's clothing. 
Well, regardless of your crackpot theories, I now need to go away and forget I ever heard Bigfoot, Romanced, and Sheep Squatch in the same sentence. Which is probably a good place to leave it for today. By the way, I'm saying hell no on the cryptid thing, or the body at all for that matter. I still think this kid was lying, probably to impress his friends. Well, I've got an idea. Oh no. He said it was a woman, right? I'm gonna run a check on all missing females from upstate New York around the date this kid said he saw the body. Finally, some real life investigation. Now we're talking. Thanks for joining us, friends. See you next time. Yeah, and if you got this far, we definitely owe you seven minutes of your life back. Oh, things you say to all girls you meet. Seriously? Anton, Anton, Anton. What? Oh, Anton. Oh, sweet little Anton. Stop. What are you doing? I hate this. Get yourself a napkin, old pal, because you're about to take a big, juicy bite into the tantalizing fruit of mystery. Why do you insist on making everything weird? I gotta be me, baby. Anyway, welcome to Bizarre Yet Bonafide, the podcast of the paranormal. I'm Grace. And I'm Anton. And this week, we return to the story of the unidentified body that disappeared in Hackett Woods, upstate New York. Unidentified until now. So this is the dead body some kids reported seeing, even though there was absolutely no proof. No proof? Until now. Okay, you're clearly hyped up on some kind of sugary drink right now, so go ahead. Get it out of your system. I checked the missing person cases in that area, and you best start calling me Amazing Grace because you're about to hear the oh-so-sweetest sound of me solving this mystery. You just ruined Amazing Grace for me. Which is a beautiful song. You've taken something from me today. That's right. I've done it. Put a face to a name. Or a name to a dead body. Anne Radcliffe. She's one of the two hikers recently reported missing, presumed dead, in upstate New York. And you know what else is in upstate New York? Hackett Woods. I bet she's our Jane Doe. Okay, so two people are missing. Putting aside the fact that this is a huge area and assuming these cases are linked is insane, that kid only claimed to have seen one body. So what, now two people just disappeared? Yeah. Spooky, right? Not really. Just super tragic. The part about these two hikers going missing, although I hate to say it, but people go missing all the time, especially in the wilderness. Bears are everywhere, probably. Actually, no, because look, check this out. In an article I found online, it says they probably didn't get eaten by a bear. It does not say probably. What kind of journalism is that? It's some small town rag from nearby. And no, it didn't use those exact words, but I read it and this wildlife expert says that if they were killed by an animal, there would be signs and actually it's far more likely that they just sort of fell victim to the dangers of the wilderness. Yes, that's what I'm saying. You're fighting my case for me, Grace. But the article also interviewed their family members who refused to believe that these guys got into any accidental trouble. They say they were seasoned hikers who absolutely knew what they were doing. Can you argue with seasoned hikers? Does it not create an evocative image of two hikers covered in seasoning? Well, sorry to be that guy, but being good at something doesn't exempt you from tragedy. How does that quote go? Every corpse on Mount Everest was once a very motivated individual? Jesus, that's dark. Anton, really? You have to bring it there? I'm sorry. And it doesn't explain how Anne Radcliffe's body was found all alone, not to mention hours later just disappeared completely. Well, I totally stand by my point that we just can't say for sure she was in those same woods. Why not? You're boring. Well, is there any evidence? Uh, well... No. The article actually says there's nothing to indicate they were ever actually there in the first place. Kept that quiet, didn't you? But a lack of evidence doesn't necessarily mean it's not true. Grace, have you ever done jury duty? No. Why? Good. No reason. Well, my point is, that's not the work of anything natural. For those of you who missed out on previous episodes, we've been talking about unidentified cryptids in the American wilderness and whether or not... 
They're behind this. Okay, but hear me out. The wildlife expert said no animal could have killed the hikers because they'd have left signs. Well, surely that goes for made-up animals. Uh, I mean, cryptids as well, right? Yeah, I guess. Cryptids are usually messy eaters. I'm sorry to say, but this feels like the work of a human to me. What was the other hiker's name? Ed Benson. So if they were in the woods, which I'm now aware is a big if, perhaps the largest if I've ever seen, but maybe the hikers got lost, freaked out, and turned on each other. Or one of them lured the other into the woods for a murder-suicide thing. Or maybe Ed wanted to claim Anne's life insurance, so he killed her. He could still be in the woods right now, after murdering her and hiding the body. That's a whole lot more terrifying than Bigfoot. Your mind is dark today. It is what it is, Grace. Humans are more messed up than any cryptid out there. Oh! contraire. I think, in fact, it is what it isn't. Or it isn't what it is. Wait, basically, I don't think it's humans or cryptids. You don't? Nope. Sorry, Bigfoot, but fuck off. Unless you want to get a drink sometime, wink. We've got first class tickets on the ghost train. Choo-choo! ever run out of steam. I do not, just like our ghost train, which runs off the energy of spirits of the damned. I'm the train driver. You're the, uh, conductor, I guess, and we are on our way, my friend. Where is this metaphor going? To this! Say hello to Grace Corvin, ghost investigator! So what, we're a ghost podcast now? I like to think we embrace all sorts of unique paranormal entity here at Bizarre Yet Bonafide Headquarters. And by embrace, I mean, in any way you want. Wink. Headquarters? This is your apartment. It's got one room and a mold problem. I'm maintaining an illusion. How about this? The teens only went into Hackett Woods looking for ghosts. There was no sign of the hikers ever being there, right? And there was a dead body that disappeared. Put those together and it's obvious. The vengeful ghost killed Anne and snatched Ed into another plane of existence. Some ethereal other dimension, which is when the teen saw Anne's body all alone. Then the ghost came back and snatched her away too. Ghosts can do that? Yup. Well, fuck. I know, right? Nah, you still haven't convinced me. Like, sure, these two hikers did go missing nearby, and I'm prepared to believe there's the smallest chance the teen boy may have actually seen Anne's body, which would mean someone hid it afterwards. That's scary enough without the need for ghouls. It could have been Ed covering up the murder. Maybe the landowners are psycho cannibals that killed and ate both hikers. Maybe even the cops had something to do with it. We don't know. It's fucked, but it's not paranormal. Okay, listen, I'm not sold on it yet either, but I'm definitely, like, interested. Like, I'm down to clown with the idea, you know? Ugh, I hate clowns. Okay, so what? You're going to keep looking into ghostly interference?
Voila. What is that? Yeah, yeah. No, but seriously, hon, what happened to the, the normal map? This is the normal map. The one on the phone. No bars. Of course not. Okay, let's see. So we are... Well, I guess they don't put summer camps on maps. Have you seen any signs for it? Hey, eyes on the road! Whoa! Jesus Christ, what do you think that was? A bear? What? No, no, Max, it wasn't a bear. What was it? I think it was a person. Lord, are you serious? Do you think we hit a person? I don't know. I mean, it was really cl close, like really close, but maybe we didn't... What is it? I really have this car up. Well, maybe it looks worse than it is. Uh, I should check out the damage before we try to start it up again, huh? Could you grab my, uh, the, the toolbox from the trunk? Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, actually, if you could just shine a light right here. There you go. Perfect, thank you. The sooner we get out of here, the better. Just picture yourself curling up in front of a big old fire pit singing campfire sing-alongs. I don't think people curl up right in front of big old fire pits. Why not? Uh, they don't want to catch on fire. Man, picture yourself curling up in front of a big old space eater. Well, anywhere's better than here. Where are you going? Just over here. Just stay there for a second, okay? I'm almost done. God, Max, hurry up! What's going on? I'm worried that there's somebody down there. Are you serious? Yeah, that is. They could be hurt. I don't know. I didn't think we actually hit anyone. Well, I don't know. I just, I heard something, okay? Like a, a woman. Do you think we hit her? I just want to check it out. Okay. All right. Just don't go too far, okay? Be careful. Yeah. Luck with the car.
Silas the Dog Boy. Yikes. This is too weird. What's going on? What's going on? There's something out there. Like, I was, there was noises all around oh, me. Honey, 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 take a breath. It's okay. It's the woods. There's a lot of stuff out there. There's animals. It's easy to freak yourself out. No. Can we just leave? Please? Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's go. Yes, there we go. Purring like a kid. Max, come on! Here we go, here we go. We're getting out of here. Are you kidding me? Max! I just... Okay, give me a minute. Give me a minute. We've got to go, Laura, Max! Laura, you're not helping right now. Can you just... I am trying to get us out of here. All right, just... enough! Shit, I'm sorry, honey. I'm sorry. Okay. We're safe in the car, really. We're gonna be okay. Jeez! Oh! Ah! Fuck! Oh my god, my heart just exploded. Roll it down. Hi, officer. How are you doing this evening? Are either of you injured? Really, we're fine. We're just a little shaken up. You folks want to tell me what happened here? Yeah, um... We, um... Uh, something jumped out right in front of the car and we didn't want to hit it, so we swerved and... You now here we are. Something jumped out? I'm sorry, it was, it was so dark, and it happened so fast, and they were gone. They? Ma'am, did you hit someone? No, no, God, no, of course not. You know, I mean, I don't think so. I don't, I don't know. Sir? Keep the car running. Sir? Is this kind of like the all-time scariest cop? I don't know. This is my first cop. 
What, like ever? Uh, yeah, I'm not a criminal. You folks want to tell me just what in the hell you are doing all the way out here this late at night? We're heading up to Hackett's Quarry Summer Camp. We're new counselors. You're one night early. No, no, we know. Um, but we figured we'd get in early and scope it out. You know, I mean, they know we're coming. We called ahead. And to be honest, sir, one of us kind of oversold their navigation skills and got us completely lost. You're not going to make it to Haggett's Quarry. Not tonight. Harbinger Motel. It's the nearest place you can bunk up there for the night, okay? Uh... I think we're just gonna stick to the plan, sir. I mean, Mr. Hackett knows we're coming and we called ahead. No, ma'am, you're gonna head to the Harbinger Motel. Do you understand? Okay, fine, yeah, we'll head to the motel, understood. Uh, there's just one small problem. Uh, I forgot to spring for the middle of nowhere coverage plan on my phone. What he means is we're lost, completely. All right, ma'am. Step out of the vehicle. Wait, what? Um. I just want to show you how to get to the motel on your map there. Okay? Uh, for sure. Son, remain in the vehicle. It's okay. It's okay. Okay. Okay, so we are right about here, Harbinger Motel is here. Right, okay, and where was Hackett's quarry again? Well, I'm sure the fine folks at the Harbinger Motel can guide you there first thing in the morning. Harbinger Motel. Stay on the road. Wait, but, but what if there's someone out there? Yeah, I'll have a look. Good night. Why is this guy just sitting there? That guy was giving me major weirdo The dude needed like at least a dozen showers. Oh my god, I know. What was up with the thing? I Did you see was, that? Was it blood? Nice to meet you. Get back on the road. Yes. I think I've had enough woodland encounters for one night. Thank you very much. Agreed. So where's this motel? Okay, so we're here. Mm -hmm. And the motel is here. Okay. But we're going here. What's there? Hackett's Quarry. How'd you do that? I don't know. I kind of tricked him into showing me. <laughs> very slick. Are you sure we shouldn't just get to the motel? Just listen to this guy's advice? 
Honey, you really want to listen to the advice of some creep-ass cop who told us in the middle of the creep-ass woods to go to some creep-ass hotel? No, that sounds terrible. Yeah. Let's hit the road, shall we? That's what I thought. Ma'am? Oh my god! If he called me ma'am one more time, I was gonna shove that badge up his dick hole. <laughs> Seriously, do I look like a ma'am to you? I got like 20 years before I'm a ma'am. Mm-hmm. What? I... 20's... Debatable. Easy. I mean, I'm kinda into ma'ams. Okay, we're done here. You gotta be kidding me. There's nobody here. We drive all the way the fuck out Max, here. Max, can we just look around before we jump to conclusions? Did you actually even talk to Mr. Hackett or did you just leave a message? Well, what's the difference? This. This is the difference. Hello? I guess he doesn't check his voicemail. How was I supposed to know that? I mean, clearly there's somebody here. Yeah, or it's just an abandoned car and this is a complete waste Why of time. Why would there be an abandoned... I'll get the car. Max, come on. Max, don't be a dick. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Is anybody home? What doesn't kill you will make you stronger. I'm gonna get some help. Max! Max, get over here! What's going on? There's somebody in the bunker. I think they might be stuck. Stuck? Is it Mr. Hackett? I, I don't know. Just bring some tools so we can break the lock. 
Hey, I'm back. We're gonna get you out of there. Hey. hey. Wait, what, what are these? I don't know, you just said tools. Why didn't you just bring the... Look, there's someone in there. Um, I'm not seeing anyone. What? No, look. I'm looking, I am. There, there was definitely someone there. Okay, okay, so... You sure? Yeah, I saw it online. You need a hand? Yeah. <sighs> You've seen the evil dad, right? Hello? Are you hurt? Do you exist? Hey, be careful. Max? Hun, maybe it was a possum or something. No, there was there was someone here, I swear. Hey. It's been kind of a night, you know? Let's just get to the motel. We can come back here first thing in the morning. We can check everything out, but... I mean, you must be exhausted. I know I am. I think our imagination... <laughs>
let me know what spring is like on Jupiter and Mars. In other words, hold my hand. In other words, darling, kiss me. Fill my heart with song and let me sing forevermore. You are all I long for, all I worship and adore. In other words, please be true. In other words, I. Oh, my friend, welcome to the show. We are friends, aren't we? I've waited for you. I've waited, yes. So I do hope our time together proves enlightening. There's no need to worry. I'm here to help you. Think of me as your guide into the unknown. It's exciting, yes. And terrifying. But if you're brave enough, if you let me help you, I can help you. We can help each other. You didn't find anything, and so I've nothing to show you. You need to look harder. The cards are out there. If you don't help me, how can I help you? We're supposed to be friends. You said so yourself. Search harder. Only you can find them. There are secrets out there, you know. Secrets and lies. Paths to uncover on which I can shed light, if you let me. Help me help you. And remember, what doesn't kill you will make you stronger. Peace and love. See you later, kids. Yeah, hack its quarry forever. <laughs> you know how many hearts are broken on the last day of summer camp? It's like a romance apocalypse. Hmm. I mean, you never know. The universe has a kind of way of uh, working these things out. The universe? Yeah, like the uh, the cosmic space gods. Space gods. You heard me. Okay, spell it. It's nothing to spell. You know, we're cool. Oh, so cool. We are super cool. So she dumped her ass, huh? <laughs> okay, quit it. Hi, Emma. Hey. Okay, this is, um, you've heard of spatial awareness before, yeah. right? Spatial awareness is for nerds. Uh, be a lamb and grab the last couple of bags, will you? Yes, boss. 
Say hi to Emma for me. You're a bad person. Yes, I am. Hey, are you guys gonna help with the bags or what? Oh, um, you know, I was actually just working on fixing uh, the door. It's Dylan, come it's on. broken. Dylan, please. I can't. It's, it's. I gotta get the last bags in there. Come on. with this thing? It's just. Dylan, please. Sorry, bro. Cool. Thanks, guys. Dipshit's bolted it? Really? Skill. <sighs> Ugh. Horror. I hate horror. Okay, really, dude? Locking me out? Okay, in my defense, A, it was Dylan's idea, and two, it was really funny. Oh, yeah, right. Is that is that right? I don't write the rules, man. Okay, whatever. Look, are you gonna help me with the bags or what? Nah, I gotta stay here and wait for Mr. H to return our cell phone. Sorry. Jesus Christ. Okay, and why are the stairs blocked? Well, apparently it's to keep raccoons and other pesky varmints from ransacking the place. Uh, Mr. H's words, not mine. Oh! Boring! Is that you, Dylan? I can only deal with one shit at a time, Jacob.
And this place needs a serious overhaul. Oh. Jesus. Man, that's a bad place to get stuck. Hey, what are you, uh, what are you listening to? Before they knew it, the whole place was up in smoke. Good to know. Jake, bags, focus.
All right. Got the bags. Great. All by yourself, huh? Yep. Guess you're gonna have to get used to that. Oh my god, you are so mean. <laughs> At least I'm honest. Oh, okay, here we go. Okay, you're not telling me the whole truth about you and Emma, are you, son? Oh, okay, so now I'm the one who's not telling the whole story, huh? <laughs> oh, well, this is the bait I just gotta take, Jake. Oh, oh sorry, I just got so distracted about that rhyme, I forgot what we oh, were... Oh, no, 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 uh, you were telling me how you... Totally have a thing for Ryan. Wait, are we talking about Ryan, the sailing instructor with the sexy brooding loner thing that totally doesn't do anything for me at all? Ah, oh, sexy, huh? How does that camp by far? Okay, sure. Uh, look, it was all settled by the girls in bunk seven, like second day of camp. It goes Ryan, me of course, then Dylan, Emma, Abby. Okay. Nick, and then Mr. H, and... Okay, are you almost finished, please? Yep, that's it. That's everyone. So she really just dumped her ass, huh? I don't... Okay. Her whole thing is like, how are we going to make this work? Different schools, blah, blah, blah. My whole thing is like, you know, maybe long distance, blah, 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 blah. And she was just like, Jacob. She gave you the look, huh? Yeah, do not pass go. Man, she has got you wrapped all the way around that dainty little finger of hers. How does she do it? <laughs> okay, okay, you know what? Maybe you're right. Maybe she does have, like, this superpower over me. But you know what? Maybe I like it. <laughs> oh, likes it. Check. Totally not in denial. Oh, Check. Okay. Wow, the, um, the fumes of... of Jealousy are just stifling over here. Excuse me? I'm just saying, I guess some girls don't have what it takes to hang with the big dog. You're a real charmer, you know that? Look, I'm just saying, I don't know why you didn't make a move on Ryan. You should have seized the moment. <sighs> well, can't seize the moment that never happened. Yeah, well, you can't wait for it to come to you. You got to make the moment happen yourself. Oh, right. Chase the moment around all summer like a dog with two dicks until it dumps you on the last day of camp. Okay. Not gonna miss it, Caitlin. <laughs> okay, so are we sure that this old rust bucket's roadworthy? <laughs> we'll take a look. It better be. One more night in the great outdoors might actually kill me. Hey, what doesn't kill you will make you stronger. Well, I haven't killed you. Yet. And you're still pretty pathetic. Hey, shut up. <clears throat> Uh, okay, so, um, total hypothetical, but if I was, like, a huge asshole and I wanted to break down the van so we'd have to spend another night here, uh, what exactly would I need to do? Well, you'd probably break the fuel line or, I don't know, rip out the rotor arm. And yes, that would make you a total asshole. Okay, and what does a rotor arm look like again? It's like an arm that's all rotary. You know, it's under the little black dome with the leads poking out. Jake, you do realize that even if we somehow did get stuck out here, one more night with Emma wouldn't make a difference. Trust me, Chick's made up her mind. Yeah. Sure. Guess we'll just have to find out. right back tomorrow. No harm, no foul. Up here, my dudes. Why do they look like they're up to something? Hey, Jacob. What? No, dude, please. D d d Go long. Oh, Nick! Boom. Oh. oh. There it is. Oh, Ooh. man, good sight. Ooh. Freak. Oh. Oh. Ooh, I wish I had some singles. Oh, freaks. <clears throat> I'm surrounded by freaks. 
Oh, thank God. I mean, I get the whole no technology thing, but take me back, world. You would have thought Mr. H could have, like, charged up our phones, like, a little bit. Nothing's ever your fault, is it? <laughs> you know, you should really just save it for emergencies only. <laughs> Unless, of course, is being dumped an emergency? Ha <laughs> ha, oh, Ben. Uh, okay, well, at least I had a relationship this summer. Ooh, damn, now we burned. Yeah, well, maybe not everyone is looking for a hookup. Okay, okay, okay let's all put our little dicks away and get this show on the road, huh? Where's everybody else? Why, why would I know that? Mm -hmm. Sometimes you know stuff I don't. Look, I don't, I don't even know how to respond to that. You say, Nick, you're way smarter than me, and you're a super hot stud who gets any chick he wants. Okay, yeah, keep dreaming, Junior. Hey there, party bear. Status report? We are officially empty nesters. High five up top. Oh boy, you're about to get your phone back, aren't you? Let's go collect our bags and away from this mosquito-infested backwoods dump. Doors locked, bags inside. <sighs> Fuck me. Yep. Well, it's obvious what we have to do here. Find someone with a key? Shape our destiny. And by shape our destiny, I mean shape our way through this crappy lock and grab our bags. Are you serious? That's called breaking and entering. No, that's called retrieving our lawfully owned possessions. Why don't we just find Mr. Hackett and have him open it back up? Abby, come on. Our stuff is like three feet away. Mm, sorry. No. As soon as we get back to the lodge, we'll find Mr. Hackett and have him help us get our bags. Fine. Emma. Okay, well, well, fine. I'm just going to do a quick sweep then to make sure we didn't forget anything. Knock yourself out. Ouch. Let's hope Jacob hasn't seen this. Ready to roll?
Let's do it. Finally. Time to let loose and vamoose this caboose. How are you so... Dramatic. Annoying. Confident. It's just acting. It's what the people want. So you're faking it? I mean, in a way, faking it is just being yourself, but louder. You should try it sometime. You never know who you might impress. No, <laughs> It's too late now anyway. For what? You and Nick? You never know unless you put yourself out there. Nice steering, Tex. Jinkies. Okay, so hypothetically, if I were to put myself out there, what if he ends up being a dud, kind of like you and Jacob? He's actually really sweet. Then why'd you quit it? Summer fling. We're going to school like four states away. I, he gets it. Yeah, sure. But that's us. You and Nick could be different. When do you get his handle? Hit him up. Oh, I already have his email. It was in the packet they gave to us on the first day. Email? Are you 93? What's wrong with email? I'm really gonna miss you, Abby. Oh, hold up! Oh, but the lodge is that way. Go right here. Why? Come on, scenic route? One last victory lap around the camp? Sure, what's the victory? Two months, no technology. I kind of thought it was nice to be offline. Ugh, I didn't. Plus, my subs need me. You know what? I actually believe you. Abby, was that a compliment? Your charm is infectious, what can I say? <laughs> I'd subscribe. You better. As soon as you get home, sub, share, smash that like button. The holy trinity. Okay, well now I'm really regretting it. Oh no, you love me. <laughs> My favorite spot? The fire pit? The island. Mad secluded, right? Is, is that smoke? Should we tell someone? Mm, it looks pretty contained. It's probably just Mr. H burning some stuff before, you know, he closes camp for the summer. Yeah. Speaking of which, we should we should probably, you know, get back. Oh, yeah. Worried Nick's, you know, gonna leave without you? Well, no. They're probably, like, all waiting for us. Mm-hmm. Everyone's waiting for us. Everyone, yeah. Nick, waiting for you. All, everyone, same thing. Don't worry, Jacob. I got you. I got a full tank of gas, so... Oh, fuck me. <laughs> oh, idiot. <laughs> Does nobody own phone chargers anymore? Hey, there's no signal out here anyways, dude, okay? This place is like patchy as balls. <sighs> Your balls are patchy? What? No! It's okay. I'll just go get some juice from Mr. H before we go. And... Uh, ew. <sighs> Hey, Nick. Hey, where were you guys? <gasps> Wouldn't you like to know? Ignore her, please. Let's go. Where are your bags? Mr. H locked them in the cabin already. <laughs> Why, to keep out bears? Apparently.
Yeah, bears can be bad news, especially if you've been, you know, trying out their variably heated oatmeals. I really don't think there are any bears. I tried to get the bags, but someone was all, wouldn't that make us criminals who deserve to be in jail? You're paraphrasing, but yes, it would. <laughs> mm, I don't think Mr. H would have been too happy to see his cabins vandalized. Thank you. <laughs> hey, has anyone seen Ryan? Oh, yeah, he's probably off being all brooding and mysterious and alluring somewhere. <laughs> I'm here. What were you doing under there? Having a little me party? Uh, I was listening to a podcast, actually. Oh, podcast. Nice. That's cool. What's it about? Yeah, what's it about? Is it about me? You think I was listening to a podcast about you? Okay, if anyone here had a podcast about them, it'd be me. Yeah, if there was a podcast called How to Look and Smell Like a Butt. Oh my god, you are so childish. At least I don't look and smell like a butt. No, it's a, it's a paranormal podcast. This episode was actually about this place, weirdly enough. The Hag of Hackett's Quarry. The who of the what's it where now? What's the Hag of Hackett's Quarry? You don't know about the Hag of Hackett's Quarry. Uh, if I did, would I be asking them ass? Tell her about the Hag of Hackett's Quarry. I don't think she wants to know about the Hag of Hackett's uh, Quarry. Can we just please stop saying the Hag of Hackett's Quarry? It's just this campfire story for the kids. It's, um, there's supposedly an old woman who died in a fire a few years back. She haunts the woods looking for her lost baby boy. There are, like, reports of whispers or whatever, and, and this figure that floats around, you know, textbook ghost stuff. Some people say that if she catches you alone, she'll try to turn you into her son. Or kill you. Or something. I don't know. It's never really been clear. Anyways, Haga Haggett's Corey. You made that up. It's right here in the podcast, man. Cool story, bro. Seriously, though, you should have seen the first time he told the story to the kids at the campfire. They were scarred for life. I mean, not for <laughs> life. You gotta be careful with this stuff, man. This shit's true. Come on, dude, bullshit. What's the holdup, Hacketeers? Yeah, uh, 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 nearly done, Mr. H. Hop to it. Get those butts in gear. Coulda what if our bags weren't locked up? What's that? Sounded like you said, of course, Mr. H. We're on it, Mr. H. Sorry, Mr. Hackett, but our, our bags... Right. Cabin. <laughs> We're really busting our butts here. Well, except Ryan, who's trying to scare the pants off our butts with his weird ghost stories. Okay. Okay. Enough with all the butts. And, and what's this about the, ghost the stories? The H of H's Q. The Hag of Hackett's quarry. I was just... <sighs> For Pete's sake, Ryan. Hey, you still have the van key, Mr. H? Well, yes, I do. You know, I'd lose my head if it wasn't stuck on. Back to the office I go. Give me a hand, would you, Ryan? Oh, okay. Yo, Mr. H. What's up, DJ Dillon? Any chance I could get a little charge? I want to have some uh, tunes for the road. No can do. Come on, that's like super unchilled. Hey, dude, I'm like the chillest flipping bro in the whole world, man. I just need some tunes for the ride, man. <laughs> all right, that's enough. Five minutes? Like, like five minutes, that's all I need, man. You said no, Dylan. Okay, yeah, I know, but I was just... I'll meet you at the van, okay? So, uh, Chris, I I'm actually glad we got a moment to talk. Uh, uh-oh. I'm not fired, am I? <laughs> no, no, no it's, um, it's just, you know, about the whole thing w with the... 
Hold that thought, partner. I'm gonna have to take this. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, uh, sorry. Hello? The kids can only be so much of both. They're almost out of here, all right? You're cutting it pretty close. We don't want to have just hold your damn horses, all right? Everything's a okay on this end. Bobby and I are geared up. If he's in the area, we'll get him. This is a waste of time. You know what? I know it. No, should I have? He's gone quiet. Probably staying out of the way. Speaking of which, the longer you keep me on this damn phone, the longer it's gonna take me to get rid of these damn kids. Yeah. Of course. Adios. Sorry, I, I wasn't... I, I wasn't listening. I, I was just, like, waiting. Like I mean, I heard... Uh, I mean, I, was, I didn't hear what you were... Saying. We're cool, champ. Just... Come on, it's sorry I pushed you out like that. E uh, you need a hand looking for the keys? Uh, no, end of summer, busy, busy, you know. Anyway, you were asking me? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, it was just the whole animation school thing, what you thought I should do. Right. Y you know, whether or not I should, like leave my sister with my grandparents since I'd have to live on campus, you know, and my mom's not exactly around, so I wouldn't want to leave Sarah on her own. You know, fam our family's small enough as it is. Well, family is important, Ryan. Dang it. Is everything okay? You got a hot day tonight? Oh boy. If you only knew. <laughs> Ryan, I told you to make sure everyone was ready. What happened? They don't really listen to me. Then you gotta make them listen, bud. I can. I mean... Shoot, no time to get their bags now. For real? I don't think the girls are gonna like that. We'll ship them along in a few days. So, uh, what, what did you need me for? You're one of my favorite counselors, Ryan. You know that. One of the good ones. But, do you know how many calls I get from parents, letter after letter, with these terrified kids that they send home? Huh. I, I, I didn't realize that. Believe it or not, scaring kids away from sleepaway camp is kind of bad for business. So, maybe just... Ease up on the ghost stories. Sorry, I didn't realize it was such a big deal. Gotta understand the repercussions of your actions, Buster. It's a big part of being a counselor, a leader. Yeah. Just stick to kumbaya next time, okay? What's that? You guys don't do kumbaya anymore? Good grief. I'm outgrowing my own cliches. Seriously, Chris, what's going on? I just want to get you guys safely out of Dodge before the sun goes down. Totally, yeah. Best to get you all out of harm's way. Woods are chock full of live game and local hunters hop to it the second camp's over. It's not safe. Hmm. Where in the good goddamn are they? Will you say goodbye to Caleb and Kaylee for me? He sort of just snuck off. Well, you'll see him again next year. Caleb works at the scrapyard during the off-season, and Kaylee, well, she's still figuring out what she wants to do. She's got her whole life ahead of her. They both just come and go as they please, really. Teenagers, am I right? Actually, could have used the help packing up since we were short-staffed. Hey, you guys seem to manage all right. 
But I'll tell them both you were sad you missed them. Unlocked the van, put the keys in my pocket, came in the office. Right where I left him. Uh -huh. Let's skedaddle. Make sure they're all ready to go. For real this time. Wait, how did you get your phone back before the rest of us? I never turned it in. You should have turned it off before you handed it in, Dylan. Them's the rules, you noob. I try not to dwell on the past, man. Good. Cause it's time to dwell in the minivan. Get on with our respective lives. Move it, let's go. Hey, what about our bags? Uh, Emma, I'm gonna have to ship them to you tomorrow. Hell no, thing. no, I am not leaving without- It's the way it's gotta be. Come on, Jacob, start her up. What's the problem? Ugh. Dude, I don't know. I, I think there's something wrong with the engine, Mr. H. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, dude, it's just like kaput. All right, let me try. What, dude, I'm telling you, all right, it's busted. Well, maybe you're doing well, it wrong. Well, maybe you're doing it wrong. The fuck, dude? Enough. Enough, both of you. Shit. Come on. All right, come dude, on. Chill. Chill, Let's go. dude. I'm Damn it! I thought I told you kids to check everything. We did. It, it should be working. Yeah, well, coulda and shoulda doesn't mean it is, does it? Damn it! Okay. Okay. Uh, well, uh, look, it's not that big of a deal, okay? We'll just spend one more night here. No! No! Just stop. Let me think. Okay. Damn it. You're right. You're right. Yeah. What? Yeah, you're right. Hey, Brian. Come here for a sec. Make sure that everybody is inside the lodge for tonight. Lock the doors. No one in, no one out. No one. Got it? Okay. I'll be back first thing in the morning. And we'll get you all on the road. You just have to keep everyone inside. Can you promise me you'll do that? Yeah, sure. We'll, we'll stay inside. And a boy. Lock the doors. And for God's sake, keep the noise down. So, what was that about? Yeah. Uh said to stay inside, that we're not leaving until the morning. Are you kidding me? Am. Are you kidding me? What are we supposed to do? Well, we should go inside, like he said. We could go inside until morning. Yeah. Or... Or we could do something else. What are you talking about? No Mr. Hackett, no screaming kids. 
Just a bunch of grown ass adults ready to cut loose and get down with their animal side. Oh, hell yeah! P A R T. Why the fuck not? All right, it seems like the stars have aligned for us, no? Okay, okay, okay. One last epic bonfire blowout for all time. Oh, dude. Fuck yes, I'm in, Nick. You're in. Yeah, I'm in. Dylan's in, obviously. My man. Caitlin? I go where my people need me. Yeah, okay. M, what do you say? Mm. <laughs> yeah, I'm in. Mr. Hackett seemed pretty insistent we stay in the lodge. He was just trying to freak us out, you know? Like, um... Like one of Ryan's stupid ghost stories. Why would he want to scare us? <laughs> I'm sure he's just looking out for us. No big deal. All right, yeah. No, Party. I, I didn't mean. High five. Touch my hand, Ryan. Fine. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I just want to go on record and say that this is a bad oh idea. God, dude. Ugh. Ugh. It's gonna be fine, man. Trust me. It's gonna be chill. All right. All right. All right. Hacketeers, party planning committee. Let's do this. Um. Okay. First things first. Nick and Abby. You will get some firewood. Uh, M and I will go to the stores for some supplies. And uh, Dylan, you just, I don't know, figure out how to charge the phones or something. All right, let's do this.
Viola. And Viola. Uh, Your hair clip, madam. Yeah, uh, you can keep it. It's not too shabby, huh? Yeah. I like a man who's good with his hands. Yeah, well, they call me Mr. Magic Fingers. <laughs> no, they don't. Okay. So, if I were a beer, where would I be hiding? Beep, 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 beep. What beep, are you doing? Beep. Oh, <laughs> uh, it's my beer dar. Helps me dar for beers. Huh. How am I just noticing how super lame you are? What? But it, it's my beer dar, dude. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go over here. Wow, the kids really wiped this place out. Mr. H loved his accessories. Hmm. Think it's locked. Don't know what I was expecting. <laughs> oh. Oh, hell yeah! <laughs> oh! Jackpot! Hey, uh... Check out my giant melons. Oh. See? You just cut a hole in it? Mm-hmm. You pour in your vodka. It's party time. You just, you pour the vodka right in it? Yeah. It's the most fun you could have with a hole in watermelon. Or... Well, second most. Okay, I'm gonna leave you two alone and go look for some more party supplies. Harem Scarum? this crap. Friends? Oh, yeah. Can't pass up an opportunity like this. Okay, have y'all ever seen a grown man crap his pants? Because you're about to. Oh, my. Now, where should I hide? Jacob! Emma? Hello? Look, if you're trying to scare me, it's not gonna work. No, they're... they're funny. You think this is supposed to be funny? I mean... yeah. Ugh. Well... Do you think it's funny now, little boy? I... oh, because... You want to join 20 of my sexy clown friends in a tiny car that somehow fits us all like it's no big deal? 
I... I... Yeah. What? Moment's gone. Not forgotten. This goes locked. <laughs> Jacob, come check this out. Oh, uh, <laughs> all righty then. Door, buckle up because you are about to meet your maker. Golly, Miss Molly. No wonder he kept this place locked up. You think he'll be pissed when we made his stash? What? No. I mean, he left us stranded here. It's like, um... <clears throat> human rights, or... Whatever. Sure. Yeah. All right. Now let's see what we are working with. Hold that. The door will latch otherwise. Oh. Hell yeah. In and out. Job done. Boom. I want to look around. Go for it. Jacob, check this out. What? I can't move or else the door will latch. They look like camping supplies. Oh, okay, um, there's tents back at the fire pit, so just, let's, let's go. Did a bear do this? Oh, cool. What? What is it? A gun. Oh, cool! And, a uh, code. Okay. I'm done. So you're, uh, you're really gonna keep the gun, huh? Yeah, for bears. Okay, uh, well I am gonna find something to haul this lot back to camp.
right. I'm in. Hey, very nice. <laughs> What else is in there? Uh, just some fireworks. Oh, oh, fireworks? Yeah, but I don't think we should- No, 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 Emma. Fireworks. You know, you're right. Fireworks. <laughs> yeah, 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 hell yeah. Fireworks. Oh, um, and might I just add, um, fireworks. <laughs> hey, I found these, like, torn up bags back there. They were pretty messed up, and I think they might have had blood on them. Oh, oh, stop. Stop. Stay right there. <sighs> oh, dude. Peanut butter butter pops. Dude, peanut butter fucking butter pops. What are butter pops? <laughs> no. What? <laughs> I can't believe it. Um, okay. Um <clears throat> pop pop peanut butter butter pops. <laughs> pop 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 them in your mouth. Pop. Oh my god. They're like the greatest snack of all time. What are they? Are they like popcorn? What? No. No, 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 no. They're nothing like popcorn. They're like their own thing. Like their own subgenre of food snack. You know what? I haven't had these since I was a kid. You are in for such a treat. Okay, wait. Is there an expiration date on that bag? Um, no, they're still good. Oh my god, they're like 20 years old, aren't okay. they? Okay, look. They predate expiration dates. Well, well, you're gonna love them. Well, oh my god. Oh. Well... I saw a wheelbarrow out front, so we can load up all our booty in there. Uh, I'm sorry, what? Booty? Oh, it means like, um, like treasure or buds. <laughs> no, before that. Wheelbarrow? Uh, yeah. Um, okay. Uh, it's like, um, it's like a barrel with wheels. You can put stuff in it and just wheel it around. Oh, I see. Ladies first. Um, yep. Yeah. Which way? inner sanctum it's just an office this is where the magic happens <laughs> okay yeah let's just make this quick sure just give me a sec to get this going and engage podcasts yeah all right uh what's it called the one that you're listening to right now uh, bizarre yet bona fide. So, like, ghosts and stuff? It's like, um, yeah, like the the weird and the wonderful, digging up weird mysteries and discussing if they're, well, bona fide. <laughs> Boner fide. Get it? Boner. <laughs> Your wit knows no bounds. So, should we check out what Mr. H keeps in his private den of sin? Uh, I don't know, man. I feel a little weird going through his stuff. Okay, well, I don't. I mean, come on, what kind of dirty secrets is the owner of a summer camp full of impressionable young children going to have anyway? <laughs> Not Mr. H, I know. He's cool. It's always been cool to me. Whoa, look at this old thing. 
Hey, give me your number. I want to try it out. Why? Oh, no reason. I just thought it'd be nice for somebody to call you for a change. Good burn. Thank you. I thought it was pretty good. Hello? What? Who is it? Hello? It's weird. I thought I thought I heard someone. Maybe we should stop touching stuff. Fine. Hey, what's the gun for? Uh, Chris, Mr. H told me it was for, um, bears. Bears? Here? Yeah, yeah, he said they don't really come around because he's got the gun to... Yeah. <laughs> Just leave it alone. Just leave it alone. Dude, we're gonna be out partying in the woods tonight, all right? What if the bears try to crash? Okay, it's it's like my mom always said, if you want to party, you gotta bring protection. <laughs> well, I think that she was talking about condoms. I'm not gonna fuck a bear. The most dangerous thing I've seen in these woods is a pissed off squirrel. That sounds pretty scary. Okay, fine. Well, we know where the gun is, if we need it. Your call, man. Well, hello, what is this? You hear that? Is that a trap door? <laughs> I knew that there was a secret sex dungeon around here somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I bet you Mr. H is into some real kinky shit. Uh, I doubt it. Weren't there a couple of counselors who never showed up? Uh-huh. Why? Secret sex dungeon. Yeah, it's not funny. It probably just goes to the basement <laughs> or something. Open it up. All right, well, it looks like a pit of eternal darkness, so... You're being dramatic. Climb down, take a look. Look, you can squeeze through there. You opened it, you climb down. Eh, on second thought, I'd rather not know what Mr. H is into. It's more mysterious that way. Sure. Ooh, that's a nice chair. I could get used to this. You better hope Mr. H doesn't catch you taking his baby out for a joyride. <laughs> Ringy dingy ding. Oh, sorry, bud. Gotta take this one second. Hello, Hackett's Quarry Summer Camp. What doesn't kill you will make you stronger. What can I do for you on this darn tootin' doozy of a day? Is that your impression of Mr. H? Uh, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, I, you're absolutely right. He does need to be nicer to Dylan. And, uh, what's that? You want him to give Dylan his phone number? That's a little forward, but I can see what I can do. Smooth. Kearney and Max Brindley. Oh yeah, those are the ones that never showed up. Yeah, it's because of these goobers that we had to work extra shifts this summer. Yo, leave the gun alone, man. You got it, boss. 
Dylan, what the fuck, man? I'm sorry. I just really, really want to know what it feels like to hold it. Um, I told you to leave it alone twice. Yeah, sorry. Cut it out. Yo, my guy, toss me the keys. Uh, so you can poke around in Chris's private area? I, I'm sorry, is that something that only you're allowed to do? Hardy har har. <laughs> Come on, what's the harm in looking? It's, you're not a little bit curious? I'm not gonna touch anything. Fine, don't let me regret it. Can't promise that, but. <laughs> Nothing but that. <laughs> you're using that wrong. Huh. Fashion icon. <laughs> Mr. H knows what he likes. Sure he does. Wow, there's... Yo. Hey, hey, maybe we shouldn't... Uh, Brian? Whoa, what the fuck? These monitors, this is the camp. Huh. Is Mr. H spying on us? No, no. I mean, no, no, he can't be. These are just, they're all different trails in the woods around camp. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Most of the cameras are pointed away from camp, so it's not like he's spying on the kids, unless they wandered out into the woods. You know, these are just, probably just, Trail cameras. What are trail cameras? People set them up to catch weird, random shit. Okay, yeah, like what? Like uh, Bigfoot sightings, you know, that kind of thing. I didn't know that Mr. H was into that kind of stuff. Shit, maybe he likes that podcast that you listen to. Secret hobby, I guess. Expensive hobby. Yeah, well, I mean, what else are you going to do out here? Yeah, I guess camp probably does get pretty lonely when there's no one else around. Yeah. Okay, but why go through all the trouble of hiding this room through a secret door in the closet? Uh, I mean, it's not exactly secret, right? Like, it's just hidden by stuff. Yeah, that's what a secret is, Ryan. It, it's weird. It's major league yeah, weird. Yeah, I don't disagree with you, but... It, it's It's gotta be something juicy in here. Dylan, okay. it's it's none of our business. And if you really want to know, you can ask him tomorrow. I'm sure that won't be an awkward conversation, like, at all. Okay, yeah, maybe I will. All right. I, I'm leaving the secret layer. Have fun. Hey, you just admitted that it's a secret layer. Okay, these are boring.
Whoa, there's some pretty heavy duty stuff in here. Yeah, maybe let's not touch that. Yeah, there's nothing fun. So, got anything going on when you get back home? School or? Uh, jury's out. Understood. Girlfriend? Uh, not exactly. Boyfriend? Free agent. Cool, yeah. Me too. Are the, uh, phones? Uh, yeah, probably. You want to check? Oh, let's just give him another minute or two, just to be sure. Kaylee and Caleb Hackett. Weird kids, huh? I like them. Yeah, me, I, me too. Um, they are pretty reclusive, you have to admit. So, if you do go to school in the fall, have you, like, picked out a major, or...? I don't know, man. It's kind of hard to talk about right now. Oh, have you not decided what you're gonna do with your life? Hey, are the phones done yet? Nice. Full up. Hey, Dunzo. All right, cool. Let's go. Thank you. This would be a lot easier with Mr. H's chainsaw. It's really very pretty out here when there's no kids around. Can get kind of obnoxious, huh? Yeah. <laughs> they always seem to listen to you during painting class. You've seen my class? Just walking by. <laughs> the art cabin's all the way out of the way. Yeah, well, there's this shortcut that I take that goes by. Which way should we go? Why don't you choose? Let's go this way. Oh! Oh my god, are you okay? I'll be okay. <laughs> Come on, I'll spot you. Don't. 
I think it's a ranger box. Oh. Like a supply cache for rangers or whatever if they're out in the woods. Naked rangers? <laughs> so it would seem. <laughs> I think we're back near the path again. Oh, I know where we are. Yeah? Up here. Here, hold these. Sure. <sighs> this view is just... Damn, Abby, you're really good. No, no, this is nothing. <laughs> no, really, I'm not just saying that. This is rough, but if I can get a little bit of it down, then I'll remember it better later. It's really cool you know that about yourself. Um, yeah, I guess so. I mean, not everyone knows what they're capable of, you know? I'm sure you're capable of a lot, Nick. I mean, of course, I just don't know what. You'll figure it out. Did you hear that? Hmm? It's probably nothing. Listen, there's something there. Oh, look! Oh, it's so tiny. Oh my God, he's so cute. Oh, hold on. by a creature of indeterminate origin. Don't breathe. You need to stop breathing, tricking the beast into taking you for nothing but a corpse. And where's the fun in hunting then which is already dead? Watch the visuals alter or listen to the sound change as the threat approaches. When the danger has passed, run. Pick the right moment and run for your life. Be warned. Exhaling or running at the wrong time may just mark you as the creature's quarry, causing serious consequences. Okay, did you get all that? Huh? I thought you were gonna draw me getting French by a wild pig. 
Ah, oh, got it all up here. <laughs> Guess we should head back. 